everyone my name is Pepper Pace and welcome to my chronicles as I turn uh, this partial silicone doll Felicity into an ethnic ultra realistic baby Felicity is from bountiful baby she is a very soft silicone she has very realistic features which is what I really love about the real born babies that you can get from bountiful baby so in this part, we're going to be doing some prepping. We're going to actually, in this video, open her mouth. I'm also going to try to make a hole in the base of her neck where I've seen other people, for drying purposes, mount their baby on a drying rack, their silicone dolls on a drying rack. Is that's one of the hardest things to do is to find the right position to dry your limbs and your head. And finally, we're going to be washing this kit. So I do hope you stay tuned. Felicity silicone is very soft. Um, I don't know a lot about silicone. I'm not a silicone doll collector. I don't know yet if I truly have a preference, but I do tend to like the feel of a soft baby. Um, but I don't really like on a partial uh, limbs that are too, too soft. But this baby feels really nice. We are going to open her mouth and I'm going to try something new. I am going to try to create a hole in the base of her head, or I shouldn't say neck, so that I can mount her. But let's start first with um, how I open the mouth. I like to stretch it because then that way when you release it, um, some of that tension, it does hide that first slice mark that you put between the lips. So I'm not going to call this a tutorial uh, because I really am not qualified to tell you the way that you should open a mouth, but I am going to tell you the way that it works for me. So you saw that I turned the head upside down and that way I can get a different angle. I am trying to make not just a deep cut, but I'm trying to make a big opening big enough so that she can accept a nice size pacifier. Uh, she would be able to accept a bottle. Um, the one thing that I would caution about is to not go too close to the sides of the lips because the silicone could tear. Um, 
as you're opening the mouth and trying to wrestle out the uh you can always go back and you know to the sides um and kind of make it bigger if you want it to but at this point i wouldn't go all the way to the sides um because you're gonna see we're gonna be manipulating this silicone out of this baby's mouth I was being very careful there, but I'm surprised that I did not cut my finger. You can see some little jagged pieces inside of the mouth, but right now I'm not really concerned with those pieces because at the end, well, while I'm painting, I will pour some extra silicone uh, inside with the right tint that would look like a mouth, an open mouth. Um, what I'm really testing, we know is obviously deep enough, but how would this, the pacifier or the baby nipple fit in that cavity? I should have had a, a pacifier ready. Um, so right now I'm just gonna clean up the little jagged edges around the lips. I love these little spring scissors for this detail type of detailed work. My sister uses clippers too, like uh, cuticle clippers, and they work really well too, but just whatever you're comfortable with. And I'll go through a list of supplies that I'm going to use uh, later on in this video.
So I am happy with the way the mouth looks. And again, we're gonna fill up any of those jacket pieces inside uh, and smooth everything out. Now it's time to work on creating a hole so that I can put like a dowel in there or I can mount her on this drying rack. That's the um, inspiration. I've seen other people do it, but I will tell you, it, it was pretty difficult. So I'm not gonna show the whole thing. I'll show what happens in the beginning and how we end it. So I, I tried to make a deep hole, but I see here that it's not deep enough. So now I'm thinking, well, maybe if I cut some of the excess uh, silicone around there, I can get a lot deeper. At this point, I decided to turn off the camera and put her in my lap and try to work this out a little better. I'm a little dubious about the hole I made, but we'll see how that works and I'll show it to you a little bit later. Right now, I am filling up the sink with um, warm water. I mean, it doesn't have to be warm, it can be tepid. I'm gonna be using Dawn dishwashing liquid. Um, I don't know what kind of dishwashing liquid you use, but everyone always says use Dawn. Um, I guess because it cuts through grease and that's what the purpose of this washing is is to um, release any agents that were used to help release the silicone from the mold so that's basically like a Vaseline or some type of uh, oily uh, substance so I use though I like using something that I can actually rub gently against the silicone so in this case I'm using a washcloth and I'm going to speed this up because I am going to be taking a lot of care in how I get every bit of this silicone so we don't have any problems with um, any of this kit being able to cure because that is the worst <laughs> when the kit is not curing. So now that everything is washed, um, I'm gonna rinse it off and I'm wearing, you see I'm wearing gloves. You don't have to wear gloves for this part, but I have a cut on my thumb, so I'm wearing it specifically for what's to come next. And that is um, the alcohol. Yeah, my hands were slippery because of those gloves. But you're going to be using the 99%, or at least I'm using the 99% isopropyl uh, alcohol. And you're actually supposed to dry the kit um, of the water before you use the alcohol. I forgot to do that on the head, but I did uh, use the rest of the washcloth to dry the limbs before I added the alcohol or rubbed the alcohol onto the kit. And you don't have to dry the kit after you put the alcohol on it because it's really going to uh, just, you know, evaporate really quickly.
Now the kit is all nice and washed and before I lay it out on this mat, I do want to wipe it off because uh, there's going to be stray pieces of silicone from where I opened the mouth and tried to dig that burrow, that hole into the baby's neck. It probably took me about 15 minutes to dig a hole that was deep enough and I still don't know if I think that's a good idea or not. She does fit on this drying rack but and it's a little wobbly so in the end it might be okay but she leans a little bit against the other post on that rack so I don't know we'll see about that. Uh, and I'm also, oh my gosh, you're going to be picking bits off of this kit, you know, during this process. But I hope you stay tuned to part two, where we're actually going to show you the supplies that you need, as well as start our first coat of paint. <music> 